Members of the London Green Party will very soon be voting to select their next candidate for the 2024 London mayor election. At the time of the recording, two candidates have thus far put their names forward, Banali Hamdash, who is a councillor in Islington, and Zoe Garbett, who is a councillor in Hackney. I'm delighted to be joined by the latter of those today, but before I introduce our candidate for today, I just have one thing to remind you to do, which is to scroll down right now and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the other videos and interviews we're putting out in the coming weeks and months. So without further ado, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Zoe Garber today. Zoe, how are you doing? Hi, Chris. I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm also good. I'm getting ready for Christmas and winding down work, which is always nice. Um, so to kick us off, uh, hopefully a straightforward question for you. What makes you the best place person to be the Greens candidate in the next mayoral election? Great. And yeah, just thank you for doing this um, coverage. I'm really excited to speak to you today and to have this opportunity to um, talk about the campaign. So, yeah, I'm really excited to be putting myself forward to be the London Greens um, candidate for the election in May 24. Um, and there's lots of reasons why I think I'm the best candidate, um, one of which is um, in May this year, so May 22, I ran um, as Hackney's Green Party's mayoral candidate and achieved um, almost double the vote share for us. And I engaged in kind of public hustings, um, engaged with the media, um, developed kind of some key policies that really resonated with Hackney residents and then, yeah, achieved that doubling of our kind of vote share close to kind of 17 percent. Um, I also was really key in the election in 2021, where I worked with Sean and the Assembly members on the London Manifesto, which I actually have a copy of here, uh, um, um, which was an incredible experience. I worked with um, groups across London to make sure our policies resonated with them, looked at evidence to make sure that all of our candidates could speak to those um, policies with confidence and just got lots of experience of how London works and putting forward a green vision for London. Um, I've also got lots of support already from loads of really wonderful people, which I'm delighted to say I've got the backing of Caroline Lucas, Sean Berry, Caroline Russell, Tyrone Scott, um, Amelia Womack all putting their support behind me. And I'm willing to work really, really hard to um, justify that support. So you talked a little bit there about kind of uh, yourself as a candidate and you mentioned the words green vision. Uh, in that response. I wondered if you could talk us through what your vision is for London. Well, that's a brilliant question. Um, and I think, yeah, it comes down to the kind of city that we really want to live in. Um, and a lot of what I do and a lot of what I care about is all about fighting injustice. That's the reason that I got into politics and what motivates me to do a lot of the stuff that I do. So I think my vision is all about how we live in a kind of fairer, more equal, safe London. Um, a lot of that comes down to the way that our rights are respected, um, especially the way that we're policed. I hear from a lot of Londoners and from the work I do in Hackney and with London Assembly member um, Caroline Russell all around um, challenging racist policing and kind of the overreach of the police's um, yeah, work that they do, kind of violating people's rights and the trauma that that causes. So my vision for London is all around resetting that relationship with the police and really kind of working with Londoners around what kind of consent and safety looks like. But also, you know, it's also creating that kind of greener city, the most trans inclusive city, um, and really kind of tackling um, the real kind of deep issues that people are facing in the cost of living crisis. So, you know, really challenging to make sure we've got kind of the appropriate housing, that writers have, um, renters have rights, um, and that we're kind of standing in solidarity with workers across the city. So it's kind of, yeah, based on that kind of green vision around solidarity, inclusion, um, yeah, and making sure that people are living, yeah, are able to thrive in, in London. So that's the big picture. I want to kind of uh, narrow it down a little bit. And so if you were elected as uh, London mayor in 2024, what would the first 100 days of a Zoe Garbett mayoralty look like? <laughs> That's a really exciting um, prospect. Um, so the first 100 days, so immediately I'd want to deprioritise the policing of cannabis. We know that stop and search um, has hugely increased under Sadiq Khan. It's gone, you know, almost kind of doubled um, in his kind of two terms. Um, so I want to really look at 
deprioritizing the policing of cannabis um so young people can live more kind of safe fulfilled lives and they don't end up kind of criminalized for just kind of carrying a small amount of cannabis and we know that that's happening in cities across london and that london is really behind um so i'd immediately do that and then set about a real deep reform of um policing in the city i'd also look at bringing in um fairer road charging and looking at cutting fares and making travel you know making green travel the cheapest green um, and easiest option for people so that includes looking at um free fares for people under 22 that scotland do and you know learning from other cities about how they've radically changed the way that people can move around cities so you know london could be this really vibrant place where people can you know say pedestrian cycling people wheeling and scooting can move around really freely and i think I've got a real opportunity to set that in train through the kind of powers around um, TfL and travel. Um, I'd also want to look at how we um, operate as a city. So that's all around kind of the power that the mayor has. So the mayor holds a ridiculous amount of power. And in the um, election around the Hackney mayor, I also challenged how much power one elected person has, which is not right and not in line with our kind of green values. So we'd look to kind of devolve power um, and fight for kind of more developed power in London, but then sharing that power out with residents and looking at how the kind of assembly is structured. Um, and yeah, probably lots of other stuff too. <laughs> a very busy 100 days, I don't doubt. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about, I guess, uh, the campaign uh, for the London mayoralty in 2024. So if you are selected, what that campaign sort of looks like. Um, one of the things that I wanted to sort of ask you about is with the London mayoral election, it's obviously the entirety of London, well, not necessarily the entirety of London because the boundaries are a little bit weird, but it's London as a whole city that is voting. And um, that's a massive constituency. Um, and every political party in that campaign will be trying to build an electoral coalition of different voters. Um, what do you think the Greens electoral coalition needs to be in that next election? Yeah, so I think this is a really exciting opportunity for us as a party. I think we're growing from strength to strength in London. Um, obviously, we increased from 9 to 12% in the London Assembly list vote in 2021. We've had huge success in London in 2022, breaking onto councils where we didn't have representation before and breaking back onto some we haven't been represented on for a long time. And I think we've done that through demonstrating our real understanding of the issues in those areas and being able to you know with the more elected members that we get the more that we can show that we're a credible party and we've got a lot you know a bigger track record of um successes you know we can really point to the, some of the successes in the assembly as well as our kind of london representatives and i think that comes with the fact you know the fact that we are winning votes from all across the political spectrum we've seen that nationally with how we're winning seats from kind of traditional labor and tory um, areas and I think we see that in London too and we need to trust our electorate that they want to vote green we've secured 60 you know with our first and second preferences we've secured 60 percent of the Tory vote in the 2021 election and we need to you know that vote is not secure you know the Labour and Tory the Labour and Tory parties are in completely different positions than they were in 21 and I think this is a huge exciting opportunity for us to really appeal to a huge range of voters and to show them we, we can hold all parties to account and to really we do really stand up for all communities and a range of issues so I think we can yeah we've got a huge potential um in 2024 um so we've got our kind of traditional green voters and those that have trusted us we've kind of got huge green um support in the boroughs that um where we've got um elected mem um, elected councillors but also we've got that opportunity to reach into um all different kind of you know traditional voters and i think we've shown that across the country a lot of our viewers obviously are members of the green party or supporters of the green party but we do have a not insubstantial chunk of people who watch our videos who read our articles who are uh, who have voted for a range of parties in the past, um, who might be supporters of the Labour Party more traditionally, might have fluctuated between Labour and the Greens. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could give the the one reason you would give to somebody who is potentially a Labour voter as to why they should vote Green in the next mayoral election. 
I think that we are the party that really does have genuine um, policies and values around all the things that traditional Labour voters um, talk about. But I think the Labour Party has completely failed in a number of key key issues recently, like not showing solidarity with striking workers, Sadiq Khan's failing on taking action, urgent action on police failings, um, you know, letting down renters, not building the housing we need. And I think this is real time to have a green representative um, and a green mayor in London to really take action, you know, genuine action on climate, you know, genuine action on air quality. You know, we've seen Sadiq Khan claiming to take action on air quality and then building more roads. And I think it's it's just appealing to the fact that we are again and again showing our values and we we do stand up for people in those issues. We're not afraid to challenge. And um, yeah, I'd really welcome, yeah, lots of, yeah, votes from lots of different parties. And this is my last uh, kind of serious question. And I always end these interviews on a, on a series of kind of more flippant ones. So that's still to come. But my last serious question for you is, the uh, next mayor election is going to be the first that will be uh, will take place under the first past the post system. So historically, the mayor elections have been using uh, a supplementary system where people get two votes, one for their first preference and their second. Uh, it's a slightly more proportional system than first past the post, or no, not wholly proportional. Um, now the this presents a real challenge for the Greens because uh, the Greens have for a long time been able to say in the London elections, you can vote Green with your first preference and then uh, you can vote with your heart. And if you have to vote for someone else, you can do so with your second preference. Um, this time around, the Greens aren't going to be able to do that. And uh, some uh, commentators and analysts have said that's going to really harm and hurt the smaller parties. Realistically, what do you think the best uh, result the Greens can achieve under first past the post in this next election is? Yeah, I'd just like to firstly say that I was infuriated by the overreach of the Tories' powers around changing the election to first past the post. It came at a time when we were working really hard in the 2021 election, and it was just absolutely devastating. Um, I mean, we've still got, we will still stand, I will, I'm proud to stand on Green Values and to run a campaign that is really going to speak to, to and resonate with Londoners. Um we do have the opportunity, obviously the list remains proportionate and that is where we're, you know, I'm also standing to be a London Assembly member and that's where we're, we're going to work really hard to try and get that, those five London Assembly members that we're we're setting our goals on. Um, but yeah, I think it, you know, it, it is going to be really difficult. But as I said earlier, I don't think the Labour and Tory vote is as strong as you know, they, they're going to say that it is, we're going to be pushed out by saying it's kind of between Labour and, and the Tories, but it, it absolutely isn't, you know, um, Sean Bailey ended up 10% behind Sadiq in the last election. We, as I was saying earlier, we've got a huge amount of potential in our second preference voters, and we've got to trust that a lot of those voters will be putting us first in 2024. The political landscape has changed hugely, like our story in London, as I was saying earlier, about being able to point to all those green successes. And I think we just need to, you know, come out with a really strong campaign. I know that lots of London parties are selecting general election candidates and then, you know, people were great people are putting themselves forward for the London Assembly list. And I think it's is a, you know, it's going to be a really exciting election for us. And I think we need to just go forward really boldly. So as promised, that's the end of the serious questions. And I've previously been told that the flippant ones are the hardest. So um, uh, so you've got that to look forward to. So my first flippant question is, what is your favourite London borough and why? Oh, OK. That's a great question. So I've, I've lived and worked in a number of London boroughs. So I started off kind of in Lambeth and in the south have friends in the South. And then I worked out in Barking Dagenham for a while. And then my work, so I work for the NHS and I cover North Central London. So five boroughs through that. Um, God, I'm trying to not to be really predictable and say that Hackney is the best borough. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm explaining that I have love and kind of interest in the whole of London. And I get that there's kind of different issues across the whole of London, but I am going to have to show my huge love for Hackney. Um, I found this I found this borough over 10 years ago. I've met some wonderful people here. There's amazing campaign groups. We've got, you know, in my ward, I've got Ridley Road Market, which has been operating since the late 1800s. And I absolutely love being able to say that I'm a Hackney councillor and representing Hackney. 
Um, and the issues that we experience are obviously those, you know, represent, you know, are representative of lots of kind of wider borough issues too. What's your favourite tube line? Oh, what is my favourite tube line? Um, so, yeah, so I'm, um, there's many different, like, I'm just going to have to go over the overground because one, I live in Hackney and it's connected to the overground. Two, you kind of can look out the window and also you can occasionally take your bike on it if the time permits. So <laughs> loads of different reasons to love the, love the overground. Um, but yeah. Yeah. What is your favourite London music venue? Oh, as in like live for live music? Or yeah. Oh, that is an amazing question. I, yeah, a lot of the work I do in Dalston is all around kind of supporting the nighttime economy and the music scene. Um, I'm a, I'm a real kind of, um, I love dance music and clubbing. So I'm going to say um, print works in South East London, which is under threat, which is terrible. And they're going to close and maybe reopen and open. So I've tried to like kind of participate in saving that venue, but it's like an iconic kind of European, you know, in, iconic venue in Europe for kind of dance live dance music i'll move on to my final flippant question which is the one that i ask everyone in all of these interviews which is who in the green party inspires you the most um who in the green party inspires me the most i'm going to say tyrone scott he's a really good friend i absolutely love his vision he i loved the campaign he ran in the summer standing strongly on the kind of socialist values and I just yeah he inspires me and I loved running with him in Dalston we had a we had a blast earlier in the year well thank you so much for indulging my slightly silly <laughs> questions at the end um, it's been an absolute pleasure though thank you Chris and thank you for everyone for watching looking forward to engaging more as the election goes on so before I let all of our viewers leave, I just have a few final things to say. The first of which is that voting, uh, if you are a member of the London Green Party, will open in the selection for the London Mayor and for the London Assembly candidates uh, in January. Um, so watch out for your ballot papers to arrive in your e inbox. There'll be hustings, there'll be other bits and bobs as well. And on Bright Green, we'll be interviewing all the candidates for London Mayor, as well as doing a series of other bits and pieces of coverage of the Assembly selection process. Um, the second thing I want to let you know is I'm sure that there's lots of thoughts that that interview with Zoe has provoked in you. If you have any, please do uh, let us know in the comments down below and keep the conversation going down there. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the other videos we're putting out in the coming weeks and months, including the interviews with the other candidates for London Mayor, the next of which will be with Benali Hamdash. So that's everything from me. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very, very soon.